Hi there, everybody. Welcome back to Leading Our Own Way. We're up to part three of this week's episode of the show. We're diving even deeper into our conversation with this week's guest. Let's continue exploring their inspiring journey. If you've missed part one and two, definitely go back and catch up. Also, if you're not subscribing, please, please subscribe. Enjoy the rest of the show. See you soon. Um, in, the, in that moment when I was struggling and I was um, in the fetal position and I really needed like to know, I'm like, I, I just, I needed something, right? Anything. And um, I remember just sitting in, you know, feeling sorry for myself and my jocks and my singlet on the couch thinking, what the hell am I going to do with my life? I'm so screwed. Uh, you know, how am I going to pay rent? How am I going to do this and that? Just feeling sorry for myself. Mm -hmm. I remember turning on and watching um, a Tony Robbins documentary, I'm Not Your Guru. Yeah. And it couldn't come at a better time. Meant to be. Always does, right? Mm -hmm. And um, I remember thinking, I, I, I love Tony and I, and I know about him, but I want to know more about him. There, the, like, there must be something in him that is making him so well known that helps him get results in such little result in such little time. What is it? So I started to research him and research what he studied. And I found that he's, he, he's famous for NLP, which is neuro linguistic programming. On that note, my quote, co my co-author does all that training and in, in, in the sports world. Yeah. Nice. That's what I know a little bit about that. Yeah. 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 Yep. Um, so then I just, I just started read up on, um, reading up on it. And I remember, um, doing like an info two day course, just a light course. And I was blown away of, of the things that I didn't know. Like, remember, like this is a two day course. That's not really well known. And I had just done a, like, I, I've just finished my MBA. Mm. Highly, highly recognized, highly respected. And I didn't learn any of this. Mm. I, this is the first time, and I had been in pharmaceuticals, you know, the, the top uh, industry where they train people, uh, had been in medical, like I've done, I've done a lot of, of personal development, self-development. I didn't learn this. Mm. And then I just wanted more. I, I, I became like a sponge. So I started learning more. Um, and what I found, which was the big pivotal moment for me, and it was like someone turned on the light for me. And I thought that my anxiety and my depression and my limitation was just to that moment, was just to that business moment where I was just struggling in business. And what I learned um, is what it was a, it was a, a continuous behavior cycle from ever since I was little. And I didn't know that it was a trauma response. Yeah. From when I was, um, you know, from when I was two. And when I understood the pattern and I, it was like, oh my gosh, I could finally look back to my past and link and connect all those dots. This wasn't just isolated to this event. Mm-hmm. And it was like someone opened up and turned on the light inside of me. And I could finally see the mess in the aisles. And in a way, it was liberating because I could finally clean it up. Because you knew the root cause. Because I knew the root cause. Yeah. Which we don't do in most different facets of the world. Yes. We're always just trying to diagnose the symptom. That's right. Right? Mm hmm Plus, at that time, at that moment, I had, um, I had done uh, weight loss surgery twice because oh. I was trying to lose weight, right? And I had done every weight under the sun. Just, just whilst you're on that, mate, I've got a picture here. <laughs> Those who can't see it, on this, he's laughing at it, <laughs> but it's a perfect time to talk, to show you. Yeah, I just look at that monkey and I just start laughing. Yeah. Right. Okay. I'm glad you're laughing at the monkey and not yourself. <laughs> I mean, that is a, a big difference, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so um, for those who can't see the picture, I'm showing a picture of Karim with, he's looking dapper in one with his shirt and tie. 
and uh, another picture where he's laughing at. He's a he, he's quite over. He's a little bit overweight, and he's got a monkey on his shoulder. That's why he's laughing. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of weight. So I was big, and it's not just the weight. It's all the stuff that was happening inside of me as well, like where my mindset was. Mm. Yeah. I felt that I was unworthy, undeserving, all those types of things. And that then adds to the uh, contribution of the weight, doesn't it? Of course. Yeah. But I, did, I, I couldn't connect the dots. Yeah. Like I thought it was just calories in, calories out. Yeah. Well, well calories, is if, if we're talking about energy, uh, uh, well, I know we're not talking about, but that's heat, isn't yeah. it? It's a measurement of heat, calories. Yeah. 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 But it was, it was more than that. It was, I was trying to numb, like I used food as a drug. Yeah. Right. And I, and I, and I didn't understand that. I thought like, I just ate because I was hungry. But if I, like once I started to understand it was, I was trying to escape Mm -hmm. whatever I was trying to numb. Yeah. We're trying to fill that hole, aren't we? I was trying to, yeah, I was trying to, yeah, I was trying to fill the hole. So what did you get up to in weight wise? 140. So I, I did the first weight, weight loss surgery when I was, when I was a bit younger. Mm Mm-hmm. And then um, I I had my had my son, and during that time I knew that like I had I had known a little bit about human behavior to know that my son is gonna t- take after me, take after my habits. And I said, this isn't happening, you know. He's not gonna. I want to do right by him. Hmm. So I went under the knife again, and hmm. I had weight loss surgery again. Yeah. Cause I didn't want him to take on my, my bad habits. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and lo and behold, I started to put the weight back on again. Right. And I'm like, hell no. Cause the cause isn't, the root hasn't been fixed though. Has it in your head? Right. Right. The cause hasn't, hasn't been like, I, I didn't understand why I, I it's, it's silly. Right. But mm. I just thought it was, you know, all about dieting, all about healthy eating if I followed these things, then I would I would lose the weight. But it wasn't that easy. Well, it's the same with exercise, isn't it? You could be exercising until you're going blue in the face, but if you're stressed, that's why yeah. you can't get rid of your your, your belly weight because of all that cortisol that's sitting down. Yeah. There. yeah, yeah, yeah. And the reason why I'm mentioning all this is because when I started uh, learning more into um, human behavior and NLP and um, Dr. Martini method, mm-hmm. My business started to get better. Well, there you go. And I started to lose weight. And I remember thinking, why didn't they teach us this? It, it's the same when pe- schools and health practices and different businesses bring in these people with all these amazing theories, but we don't actually, these theories don't necessarily cover people being healthy and well and, and being mindful and, mm. and and but they don't understand the characters that are in these organizations it's a big yes. umbrella and on that umbrella that goes over it doesn't cater for the types of characters and personalities and yeah. little millions of variables they've all got each going on in their lives as well yeah do you know what i mean and that's what frustrates yeah. the hell out of me yeah in because you could place. i mean you would see this you're a, you know like you're seeing it in you know on the other end mm. yeah absolutely yeah, um, yeah. And, and, and my stutter disappeared, <laughs> right? So I had spent years living in shame and living in, um, you know, fearing, um, you know, go, like anything, like having normal conversations, job interviews, mm-hmm. um, anything got to do with speaking. I couldn't express myself. Mm-hmm. So I had a lot of resentment because I couldn't express myself because of the fear of how I sounded. Yeah. I felt humiliated. Of course. And then all of a sudden, um, everything that I had, all these speed humps or, you know, roadblocks that I had had in my life was suddenly disappearing. Yeah. Because you're starting to build your confidence. Yes. You're starting to control all your immune system and you're starting to control yeah. all your parasympathetic system and yes. you're getting all this goodness in the world coming into you, whether it's your son, the getting in the sun, getting outside, spending time yeah. with your family, you know, love and connection. You're contributing towards the world. It's the four C's, right? I, I think I got this off Diary of the CEO. Yeah. C for, you know, uh, connection and then the second C for contribution to the world, what mm-hmm. you give, and then the third C, cope. So sleep, exercise and mindfulness. Mm-hmm. And then your fourth C, cook 
Yeah. So meaning good food, whole food. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 it was well as well. It was all this stuff that was being suppressed in my subconscious. Mm. But I didn't even know that it even existed. Well, it gets trapped there, doesn't it? Because we're not looking after everything else. Yes. Can't see anything else going on. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, anxiety, we talk about fixing anxiety, but no one ever actually talks about what anxiety actually is. And again, Mm. it's off these type of podcasts that we both listen to where they talk about the presence of fear. You know, if you're scared of a height and you're top of a building, then there's a presence of a fear there because the risk that's involved. So your body anxiety, well, anger, uh, sorry, fear is a a survival emotion and maybe Mm. a desired one, but it's something we need to have for survival. Yes. But then, when we're anxious and there's no presence of a fear, well, that means there's something physiologically going wrong mm. inside that we need yeah. to look at the root cause in order to live a a life of contentment to some extent. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. So let me ask a personal question then. With uh, mm. your son, I, I feel like our lives are mirroring here because I was going through a tough time maybe nine, to, nine months to a year before he was born and... Um, when I found out we would have him, I thought I'm on a new trajectory of my life and um, things are going to go, things are going to change. Yes. I'll have something to focus on that's mine and that no one else can be a part of. Mm. And um, being in Australia, didn't really have many friends. And I saw him, I've said it on other episodes where I was probably over trying with a lot of people that I was working with, maybe trying to fit in. Um, and, you know, they have their own lives because they grew up here and you yeah. don't see that side of things. Right? They've got their own friends and family to go home to. Mm-hmm. So, but in all honesty, I'm going to be open and honest. And I've, I think I've said it before. I know I have said it before. He didn't fix me. Hmm. He, I, God, I love him for sure. Uh, and he was amazing. And I loved having him, but he did not fix me inside. That, and no. I, through that lesson, I've learned there's only one person that can fix inside mm. of yourself. Right. So that's my question to you. It seems like our timelines kind of match very similar there. Um, Did your son, having your son, fix you? No. If anything, if anything, he brought out instinctively, brought out more insecurities. Yeah. Yeah, because you you knew you couldn't support or... Yeah, it was like, oh my gosh, I'm... It was like a light bulb moment for me. Oh my gosh, Hmm. I'm, I'm my dad all over again who came with nothing. Yeah. Right. He but came a different to angle trailer. in the mindset though, right? Because your dad was what, healthy and, and, and in a good mindset though, wasn't he? Yeah, it? but as in like, as in providing wise, I'm like, oh yeah. my gosh, I'm back to where my, like, to where my dad was, you know? And it was irrational, obviously, but it was a big trigger for me. Because mm, sure. I had brought back a lot of pain. Um, and, the reason why my parents brought us here is for a better life. So in a way I was like shitting in their face, Letting you know, down. Saying, yeah. you know, like, Oh, you know, you, you, you made all these sacrifices to come here and here I am back at square one. So there was a lot of stuff that came up for me. Like I wasn't good enough to have him, Um, you know, how, you know, like how can I raise such a, like a beautiful person, baby you know um and you're right it like and in that moment i knew that i needed to change so it was part of my journey of being a better version of me so i can give him the best the best version of him yeah 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 absolutely so this trauma um, going back to the primary school days, did this stick with you? Because you 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 landed, but you in Melbourne, but you moved in different areas of Melbourne. You moved quite a few times, didn't you? Around Melbourne, is it- I moved, yeah, quite often. Uh, I think we moved around, yeah, around five times. Wow. Yeah. So from school to school, from place to place, um, yeah, just moving all the time. And, and that that's disruptive as well, isn't it, in someone's life? 
because you kind of have to reinvent yourself every single time. And you, but it, the paranoia is setting, thinking, well, they all know each other. They're going to treat me exactly the same because they'll have messed, <laughs> you know, they'll have emailed over and said, this is what Karim's all about. Yeah. 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 But it was just, you know, all over again, having to explain myself again and go through the stutter and go through the whole humiliation and all that type of thing. So it, it was, it, it was tiring. Because if, if I can say this, um, I remember in our, in our pre-chat a few weeks mm -hmm. ago, you actually labeled yourself. I'm going to quote you here if that's okay. Cause I wrote it down. Sure. Yeah. You were known as the fat kid, dumb kid with the stutter. Yeah. That was my label. Yeah. That's so yep. sad, isn't it? And, yep. and how long did this, well, that's primary school. How did, well, how did high school look for you? Um, well, it stuck. So it stuck from um, primary school to high school. Uh, and then I moved to another high school. So I moved in, in I think, uh, in year eight or nine to another high school. Hmm. And I said, that's it. I'm going to reinvent myself. So I've, I was overly friendly with everyone, right? Because my parents were like, you know, make sure that you, you know, like you're polite and all that type of thing. So the kids, you know, don't make an excuse to, you know, not be, not be friends with you, which which hurt me as well because in a way that, that they were implying that it was my fault, you know, that I didn't, you know. So I felt like no one actually believes me, like that it, I had nothing to do with anything, right? I was just being me. Yeah. But I but I did it anyway. I was extra polite, extra nice. Um and it was good. So I mean like it worked. I made friends. I was a popular kid. Um but I think I think what it did it was I was the I was the I was the guy that, that was wearing a mask. You know, that I was the, um, I was the class clown, you know, I was a person who entertained others. I made sure that everyone else was okay. I was a big people pleaser. Um, we know how detrimental that is, don't we? Being a people pleaser. Oh yeah. So like it worked at the time, obviously it, it was uh, necessary, mm. yeah. right? I mean, as much as I thought anyway, but this stuck with me. Um, and this became again, part of my subconscious that I had to people please. And I had to go out of my way and, you know, I, I never felt good enough. Um, yeah. So it was, it was big. Huge. Yeah. Mm. So you leave high school. What line of work did you get into after high school then? So high school, um, I felt, I felt that I was bright. I felt that I just, uh, I couldn't pay attention. Um, the teachers already had, had already uh, had made up my mind about me probably because they assumed that, you know, I wasn't going to get any, any, you know, far. I was probably a little bit disruptive as well in the classroom. I was making jokes and I was that kind of guy. Oh, you can't um, have character anymore, can you? <laughs> <laughs> and I think, um, there was a lot riding on my year 12 score from my parents because in Egypt, it's like the be all and end all, you know, if you don't, if you don't do well in, uh, you know, like year 12 in Egypt, uh, you're a failure, like you're done. Really? You know? But obviously it's not like that in Australia, but they brought those values with them. Yeah. And I got a really, like, I didn't even, I didn't, I didn't, I think I got into TAFE. I, I, I couldn't even get into university. So for those, I'm not even fully clear, and I'm in the education system, but for those who are not in Australia, what does TAFE stand for and what does it look like? What does it stand for? Yeah, I don't know I, what it stands for. Maybe tertiary... Oh, man, I'll be guessing it now. TAFE. So is it like a back... I'll, I'll have to Google it. Yeah, no, and that, that's fine. We can. That, that's not a problem. But yes, that's kind of like a um, TAFE is like a backup, isn't it? To those, it's who... more. It's more of like a um, considered more of a like uh, like a hands on. Yeah, that's right. Uh, like career path, like apprenticeship type thing. Yeah, so you've got different things. You've got like you can get into like 
science, TAFE. Yeah. Um, so you've got like batch, you've got TAFE and then you've got bachelor. Yeah. And then you've got your master's, you know, and then you've got your PhD and so forth and so forth. Mm-hmm. Um, I couldn't, I couldn't get to that bachelor. Uh, I, I couldn't get into university. Yeah. Because my, because my marks were so low. Yeah. And there was a lot of shame around what I got and, you know, uh, you know, that I wasn't high enough. So I had to go through that too. Um, especially cause I carried a, a, a lot of guilt around that, you know, because I really wanted to do well for my parents. You know, they had done so much for us mm-hmm. setting up a life for us that I wanted to give it back. I wanted to give back to them, but, uh, straight out of, um, straight out of school, I went into do massage therapy. So probably even before that, I did like a month or two of civil engineering. I thought that, you know, I wanted to do civil. I, 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 I didn't know what I wanted to do. Yeah. So um, I was just mucking around. I went to some civil engineering classes. I went to, I did like a week and I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't do this. I couldn't, I couldn't just sit in there uh, and do civil engineering. It was just so boring. I'm glad you and went I'm, there because at least you knew that you, you didn't want to have to sit. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. But it was like back to square one. What do I do now, right? Yeah. I, I, and I knew that I wanted to help people. Um, and if I had the chance, I probably might have enrolled myself into some type of medicine or physiotherapy or something like this. So mm. I enrolled myself into the nearest best thing, which is remedial massage. I uh, got a scholarship then. So I, I managed to, I interviewed quite well. Um, and I got a scholarship because otherwise it's at, at the time it wasn't funded. Right. Um, so I was quite lucky to get a scholarship into massage therapy, into remedial massage therapy. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I started up a business as a massage therapist. So that's where your business began. Your business journey began. Yeah. So I knew that I was always entrepreneurial. Um, I went into a clinic and into a GP clinic mm. and I'm like, Hey, you guys don't have any massage therapists here. That's good. I saw it as an opportunity. So I was door knocking. I think it was like, must've been 22 or something like this. Um, and they're like, yeah, sure. So I went in there and I remember thinking like, I remember, you know, I was massaging someone on the table and I'm thinking, man, I can't see myself doing this over and over again, like doing the same thing. I was, I felt like something inside of me was calling me for more. Hmm. I was destined for more. It was a calling inside of me. I just, I I couldn't ignore it. So then I saw these guys in really um, cool suits come in Um, and they weren't doctors. Um, They were sales reps. And I'm like, what do you mean, the sales reps? How can, you know, yeah. who, who, I didn't understand. I didn't really un- know what this was. And there were, and there were um, medical reps. So they were selling on behalf of, they were like representing the drug companies, the medicines companies. And I didn't even know that that even existed. Mm-hmm. So I inquired about it. Um, and they're like, yeah, it's, you know, it's a, it's a real job. And I really loved what I was hearing, you know, like they gave you your own territory they gave you a car. You were sort of running your own business in your own sort of within a business type of thing. Yeah. Uh, you know, it was, it was pretty like, it, it was, it, it, like it ticked all the boxes for me. Um, so then I went out and I started to interview for them, for those roles. And <laughs> I was so naive at the time. Um, they only wanted people who had a bachelor's degree minimum plus a sales, uh, sales experience. I had the sales experience. I had done sales before that heaps, um, you know, in, in small jobs, but they wanted a bachelor's degree. They wanted an arts psychology teaching, something like this. And I, I didn't take no for an answer. Join us tomorrow to hear more from today's incredible guests and learn valuable insights to help you lead your own way. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you then.